my hair. It's like, dude, this thing like starts to curl it behind me. And, you know, it's like, oh uh, yeah. So what can I talk about now? I don't know. Talk about stuff, music, TV shows that I like to watch. Favorite TV shows of all time. That's gonna be a hard list to do because there's so many great shows, and I forget a lot of shows because there's been so many TV shows. It's kind of hard to like think about all the ones. But I mean, I can like off the, off the top of my head, you know. What I mean, if I go by like, generation, by like decade, in the fifties, you go know, what's going on in the fifties? A lot of shows start out in the fifties, like Bonanza. They started in the fifties. No one like like really like realizes that. All Gunsmoke. Probably the two of the best TV western shows ever. And they start out in, in the fifties, so. Then I think Perry Mason made it down there too. Perry Mason is a great show. The Fugitive, great show. Um, even that original Untouchables, that was also a Quinn Barnum show. That's a great show. I was watching that recently. That's a great show with Robert Stack. It's a very well done show. I think anything with Quinn Barnum producing it is great because he used to produce Barbie Joe and then Cannon and The Invaders and, and what, what else did he produce? Well, the Fugitive, of course. The Fugitive, Quinn Barnum production. So that was, you know, he did like a lot of good shows. But, um, Quinn, Quinn Martin, he had a high standard for, for like, sh- shows, you know. He's always, he had a Quinn Martin show, he was gonna be good. Barnaby Jones, I was watching that recently, that's such a good show. Barnaby Jones with, uh, with my girlfriend, uh, Lee Merriweather. I love Lee Merriweather. Anything Lee, Lee Merriweather is in, I love it. She's a beautiful woman. I saw how she looks now, she's still beautiful. Man, nice. she goes from. I saw her on uh, some some game show on Buzzer. She was on yeah, she was on Password, like probably about 1979 somewhere. She was probably like around 40 at the time. She's beautiful. You know, she's one of those ladies who like, age really well. Beautiful. Woman. But yeah, Lee Merriweather, I love her. She seemed like such a kind woman, such a nice. You know, you could see she was like really nice to the person. You know, those like contestants. You can just tell she's got like, kindness in her. Kind of comes through. It's not really fake. You can just tell when something's real. But uh, yeah. So yeah, anything with Lee Merriweather is is good. She was on the Time Tunnel. That's an interesting show. That was an Irwin Allen show. You know, Stingray did uh, Land of the Giants and uh, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea, and of course uh, Lost in Space. Lost in Space. But uh, yeah, speaking of yeah, yeah, Land of the Giants. How do I feel about Land of the Giants? It's not a bad show. It's like a great sets and stuff. But a lot of times, it's it's kind of it's kind of a slow show. Cause it's like. <laughs> One episode could be just them stuck in the, in some like in like a flower pot try to try to get out. Of it. <laughs> like the whole episode is like we think I try 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 to get out of this giant flower pot. <laughs> What's up to that? Oh yeah, but it's good stuff though. Um, yeah, so fifties, right? Oh, there's a show called The Rebel. It's like a Western TV show. I mean, I mean, when I was a kid, they they never showed it in syndication and stuff. But it's this show about this guy who used to be a Confederate soldier, and now he's like traveling around from town to town. He still wears the rebel, you know, the Confederate uniform, so people know he's a Confederate soldier or ex-Confederate soldier. But he's a good guy. He's not. It's like he's not a racist. Or anything. He's a good guy who fought in the war. He like helps anybody. He needs, he needs help, you know. And he wants to be a writer. And, and I think that the show is trying to tell people something, you know, something especially about the South, and not all the people from the South are bad, you know. But it's a good show, and a lot of the episodes were directed by uh, Irvin Kirshner. Irvin Kirshner, who, uh, it's probably some of the first stuff he ever, like, directed. But, of course, he went on to direct the best Star Wars movie ever, Empire Strikes Back. So you can see how, you know, why that movie's so good, Empire Strikes Back. Because he's, like, very good at that action and drama kind of mixed thing. That's what the show... The Rebel had, you know, and I guess Johnny, Johnny Cash actually sang the theme song to that. But um, the real one's not there to show play the Johnny Cash version, cause, uh, probably because of copyrights. But that's a good show, yeah. The Rebel, of course, Blake Bonanza is great. And Gun Smoke, Have Gun Will Travel, that's a... I love the Have Gun Will Travel. Well, actually, I have most of those on DVD, but... It's such a good idea. It's such a good idea for a show. You know, you got this guy, he's like a gun for hire, but he's also smart. He's like from... He went to West Point, but he tries to use his brain and... Instead of his gun, but he uses his gun and he doesn't have a choice and he's always, you know, he's very clever. Like, you know, most of his college guys are just, oh, all right, I just don't want to shoot, but he's like clever and he's like, yeah, and he travels all over the place to like help people. And so, yeah, that's good and all those other shows. I don't know, it's hard to like, yeah, a lot of these shows are like, I'm trying to think of any good cop shows from those days, from those early 60s or 50s. What, what cop shows were around, around that time? Not really. 70s was more for the cop shows. 70s was more for the cop shows, and 80s was more for the private investigator kind of shows. 
Sixty was more for the westerns. Yeah, Gunsmoke. Uh, so what else is good? The old oh, wagon train. I actually like that show. That's actually, it's kind of like Rawhide, but only oh, Rawhide's good too. It's kind of like Rawhide, but with people being you know <laughs> moving from one side of the country to the other instead of cattle. <coughs> oh, that's good. Um, the Big Valley, High Ship Rural. They're all good, decent shows. Yeah, they're all solid shows. Wild Wild West. Uh, oh, you know what show I love? Uh, I know it's from the 50s or 60s, but a show called 77 Sunset Strip. It's with, um, um, well, what's his name? Ephraim Zimbalist. Yeah, Ephraim Zimbalist. He's the father of Laura Zimbalist. Laura Zimbalist? Or? It's definitely Zimbalist. <laughs> from Bremlis to Steel. <laughs> to Laura Hall. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, 77 Sunset Strip. I love that show. Whatever seven, it's a great show. It's about these private investigators. Working out of this like witzy kind of jazzy bar next to it, they like I don't know, next to it, and they kind of you know that's you know they're probably invested in like three or four of them. But yeah, if you ever want to get into a good old show, Seventy Seven Sunset Strip is a good sh- show to get into. I love when they have those marathons, you know, on decades and they show that it, all those episodes of Seventy Seven Sunset Strip. It's good. I love that certain like certain like. Binge watching stuff is so great. That's a great show to binge watch. Or um, what's also good that I love? Wild Wild West is a good binge watch show. That's a good show. And uh, what else is really good? Well, they, oh, another good show is Route 66. That's another good show that I love. With these guys driving around in, the, in this car, you're just trying to find themselves when they go and they get into situations. They drive around in this Corvette. That's another good show. Yeah. Route 66, that's a really, yeah, I love that show. Uh, and what else? You know, you got like Leslie Nielsen, like, uh, star- guest starring in there, and all those other people guest starring in there. It's really, really great. But, um, oh, what else is good? Of course, Star Trek is great. Oh, duh, and then, I'm trying to think of any other sci fi shows from them. Oh, yeah, of course, the, the Twilight Zone, and Boris Karloff presents Thriller, that's another good one, and The Outer Limits, that was kind of sci fi kind of TV shows from the 60s. Just like the 90s Outer Limits. They should have on comic TV now. But, uh, and what else is good? What else is good? See, I kind of like Rimmel all the shows. It's like, I'm going to miss a, a little bit a lot of the show. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but then, of course, there's the 70s, and you got like those cop shows like Kojak and Starsky and Hutch and Barbara Jones and Cannon. Isn't Cannon from the 70s? Yeah, probably like 70s. And, uh, what else? You get all those other sh- shows that I never really watched, like, like when they were, because I never showed them in syndic- syndication like before until now. Like, uh, what's that one? Like, with the cop? It's like a cop show. Ah, uh, what's the name now? It's got uh, it's got Kate Jackson in it, but she was, she plays like a nurse in it. Oh, what's the name of the show? It's like a cop program, Police Story maybe? Police Story, is that it? it? Doesn't sound like that, but it was like kind of like. Kind of like chips, but with cops. But it's people have before chips. But it takes place in LA, you know. And it's, it's about these cops. Uh, but it's a good day to binge watch on decades. And that show was good. And it was good. Yeah, it was. It is good. I like it. Of course. Um, oh, another good binge watch show that they do play on decades sometimes is Family. I used to watch that show in South Africa. I used to be on, you know, with Christy McNichol and, and Meredith, 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 Meredith Baxter. <laughs> Before she brought it back to Bernie. But actually, David Bernie was actually on, on that show. I don't know if that's how they met. But yeah, family, you know, with, uh, yeah, with them. With their family. When they're like, the father's a lawyer, and the mom's like a teacher, and, and then they're in the back to places. This, she becomes a lawyer. I love when she first becomes a lawyer. I was watching this on there. See, I watched this, this, this other kid, and I forgot how good of a show that, that is. It's an Aaron Spelling show, I do believe. The family, but it's, it's good. But they dealt with like a lot of issues, and then this when Meredith Baxter first becomes a, an attorney, and she joins this firm and this law firm, and these guys, this, it was back when you know these guys were very sexist, and they kind of hit on women a lot. And she, she's a beautiful lady, so the, the boss just kept hitting on her, and she like I don't you know she like I, I want to be part of this firm, but I don't want to be hit on. Her. I want to just work. <laughs> And they're like, well, that's just how things are, honey. You just gotta deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, no, I don't wanna deal with it. And then it's cool how she was, was gonna deal with, you know, being harassed at work. And this is like a show from like 1970, 
well, like 77, 70, you know, like late 70, late you know, like 76, 77. It's kind of a new stuff to talk about, but it was like, yeah, but it's a really well done show. Family, it's called. But that's a good show to binge watch and watch it all. And it was on for, for a while, but yeah, it was a big show in South Africa like, when I was a kid. You know, but it's like, I, I love Christopher Nichols' character, Buddy. I remember, like, you know, she's kind of like a tomboyish character, but yeah. I remember when I saw the pirate movie, I remember Christopher Nichols. I was like, oh, that's, she from, that's Buddy from the family. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the pirate movie came out in 82. That's one of Christopher Atkins and Christopher Nichols. So what else is good? Um. I don't know what else. Uh, how to choose? Uh, chips, of course. Chips. One of the nice sandwiches. Sounds good. Hot chestnut. I don't know. Yeah. And then of course, eighties had a lot of more of my favorite shows because that's when I grew up. Like T.J. Hooker, Fall Guy, Seven Seven, Ramsey Steel, A Team, Mouse Lock Galactica, Buck Rogers. That was early eighties. Um, what else? Uh, what else? Uh, Vegas was a good show. That was on in South Africa as well. And Quincy, that yeah, was on in South Africa as well. Chips was on in South Africa as well when I was a kid. Um, what else? Um, Magnum P.I. was on when I was a kid in South Africa. Yes, he got started right before we left South Africa. So. And what else? All shows that I love. Um, all good shows. I'm trying to think. There was like some shows that were, like, that were canceled. Like, like Auto Man and Masquerade and Manimal. The Power of Matthew Star, all these shows I remember, I did, but it didn't last very long. So, you know, um, yeah. So I think I have other shows I remember. Yeah, but I remember watching some of these, like, like Dynasty and the Cold. I actually enjoyed those shows, but when I was a kid, but they were actually well made shows, you know. The original Dynasty was actually a great show. I watched the new Dynasty, it sucks. It doesn't have what made the original show great, you know, like uh, John Forsythe, you know, he was Blake Carrington, he was a rich guy, but he was a. He loved his wife, and he wasn't. He didn't really play around, and he had a strong moral character. And now this new guy, Grant Shelton, without the moral moral character, and he's like manipulative, and it misses the point. You, you need that strong hero character. That's so so great about it. people used to think like which people were like such deviousness. And then you got like Blake Carrington, who's kind of showed that these rich guys can be actually good people. You know what I mean? But the new dynasty, the, it kind of misses the mark. And I don't know why it's so successful, but it, it's... No, no. But the original dynasty was really good. And Dallas, that was another good show. It was you not know, like, oh, it's a soap opera, but it's so well made. It's such a good show. The original Dallas. The original one, you know, and with, with uh, Patrick Duffy and, and Larry Hagman. Yeah, it's a good show. You know, and there was, there was some other ones that I used to watch. Well, my sister used to watch it, so... Like like Falcon Crest, and that was actually a good show too. I was a kid; I didn't really want to watch Falcon Crest, but then you know, once you start watching it, oh, it's really good. <laughs> it's not the same bad. You know? Yeah, so that, that was another another good show. Not Landing. That's another one she she watched. And that was like an offspring of Di- Dallas. So. I remember that being pretty good too. That was like the one of the like one one of the Ewing brothers. He's like a black sheep of the family. And he hung, he was the character that was played by Ted Shackleford. That was a good series too, but yeah. So yeah, what else from the eighties? Yeah, so I'm just gonna stop there because that was like up to the mid eighties. I said T.J. Hooker, right? Yeah, that, that's a show I love. I love because I was Shatner and Heather Locklear and the Fall Guy. I love Heather Thomas, Night Rider, and uh, Body and April. <laughs> they were the kids mechanics, cute. Yeah, I was a little. I was a young guy then, and he started thinking, man, these women kind of cute. <laughs> it was. And then Terry Copeland in a show called We've Got It Made. She, I thought she was cute. She likes curly hair. And I'm very cute. I saw on um, on uh, Match Game. She was on, uh, and who else was good? Cute. No, all oh, her oh, shows were good. No. Yeah, 18. And made one. So the best show. Now it's Simon. <laughs> yeah, I think that's about the best. The other, uh, most of, yeah, most of the best shows were like private investigator kind of shows. Oh yeah, and Riptide. I remember that show. I actually liked Riptide. Yeah, that was good.